Welcome to From the Driver's Seat, the Avert podcast for all Avert drivers to keep up with news and information across our network. Make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcasting app to make sure you're notified as soon as every episode drops. And now, hosting From the Driver's Seat, Director of Driver Services, David Royals. Hey everybody, I got Brian Dudney for the guest today, and I think y'all are aware of Brian. How you doing, Brian? Doing great, David. Good, good, good to see you, good man. Good to see you. Appreciate see you coming you. in and spending some time with us. Yes, and, sir. Uh, you know, we want to talk a little bit about truckload in general, a little bit, and talk about, you know, what's going on in truckload and what the focus is going to be this year going forward and and kind of uh, what we might need to work on from a truckload perspective, from the driver's perspective, and from what's going on on the fleet manager side, right? Sure, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to come over today and, and speak to you. Um, primary focus right now, increased driver miles and uh, increased revenue. You know, pretty simple. That's pretty uh, that's, simple. That's just two. That's just two things. But those are two very two, important things. Two big right? ones. Two big ones. And uh, you know, I think uh, saw some numbers recently. Last week, saw an uptick in miles and pay. So uh, seem to be trending in a good direction. So uh, absolutely, those are the two big focuses right now. Yeah, because we've had a long little slow economy, which has affected us quite a bit as far as you know being able to reach out and get a lot of miles and, and improve and get get drivers up above the guaranteed minimum of twelve fifty. And that's the goal, right? Absolutely. The goal is that you know that that's really a safety net, right? It's absolutely a safety net. You know, we the goal is you know, we don't even really want to hear about twelve fifty. We want to blow past twelve fifty if we can with uh, you know, get our miles and our pay up above that. The the guaranteed pay strictly would be a safety net for that week that we just have one of those weeks and, and drivers are out there doing everything they can. We just can't uh, get the freight or whatever. And that's that's really what the 1250 was designed from the start to be. Right. And, um, and really that's where that's where we want it to be. We don't want it to be the expectation or the, the norm. We want, to, we want to make more than 1250. Yeah, that's key to it, making more than 1250. I think the drivers are on the same page as we are. You know, we, we want the drivers to make more than 1250, and I'm sure they want to make more than 1250. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're always going to maintain our home weekly status, right? We're going to continue with that. Oh, sure. No changes there. You know, we know that's extremely important to our drivers, and, and uh, absolutely no plans to change any of that. We still want to get our good home time. Uh, we just want to be more productive, as, or as productive as we can be while we're out on the road. But right. we still want to still want to maintain our, our home time. And you know, part of that is you know the drivers participating in that, and the fleet managers from their side and the company side. It all has to work together in order to, for ever, for that to happen, right? Drivers need to be willing to work out, come out, come out early sometimes, stay a little later sometimes to cover the freight because we got to be able to cover customer freight, but also. From the company side, we've got to get the freight first, right? Absolutely. You know, I know. Uh, talked to, to Tim Reeves yesterday, and Tim told me we had some new business coming on. So he's out, uh, and his team are out working hard to, to get the new business. I know, and um, you know, we're trying to reduce our wait time, uh, more drop and hook opportunities. Um, yeah, talk about the drop and hook opportunities, the swap and drop, and how that relates to how drivers are going to get more miles because I think sometimes you know there's a there's a thought process that hey if I have to swap a load or drop a load I'm going to get hurt on that but that's not the goal right no no absolutely not so we, we just want to I guess another way to say it is we want to maximize our potential once we leave home right, right? and we want to, to maximize our hours of service uh, everything that's available to us how many loads can we pick up while we're gone how, while we're out on the road more loads we can pick up that should equal more driver miles that should equal more revenue all comes together so that's exactly right and and swapping is is something that you know we're we're doing some of and and we'll continue to do some of and in in most cases a um, couple reasons the main reasons why we do the swaps positioning right. or keeping drivers in position to get home for the weekend right would be a one one big reason and another thing is to to maximize our potential in terms of maybe a load has too much time built on it uh, let's, let's set that one down and get another one where we can get out and, and, and haul some freight. And right. then we'll have another driver come through later. Maybe it has a minimal amount of hours that can match that up and let them deliver that load for us. You know, we've increased our local pickup and delivery pay to $100. So, right. uh, you know, certainly we'll be mindful of driver's time when they're out having to pick up and deliver our loads for us. But certainly swapping is, is a good thing. And you know that that maximizes how many hours a, dri uh, actually, a driver's actually going to drive in that eleven-hour drive period, right? Absolutely. And if we have maximize that, that goes back to the first goal you talked about, which is increased driver miles. That's that's part of that's part of it, right? You got to have you got to drive more 
have, have the opportunity to drive more to be able to do that, right? Sure. And, you know, we may, you know, we, we use seven or eight of our hours. Well, we still got a few hours we could use if we could find a way to, you know, to maximize. You know, we may never get every hour available to us used per day, but the more, uh, you know, two hours allows us to perhaps go pick up another load or maybe to deliver a load. And, right. And uh, at the end of the day, the end of the day, those hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there, that adds up to the end of the end of the week, and, and right. again allows us that opportunity to get above that twelve fifty. Yeah. So I know, I know, you know, from an operations standpoint, the folks at the in in house, they're all committed to the to doing those two things, make make focus revenue and, and driver miles. And that'll get us where we need to be, the revenue and then the driver miles. Both those things go up, profitability goes up, and there's a lot of opportunity then. You know, we get the opportunities to look at driver pay increases and all those. All that ties together to make good stuff, right? All ties together, yes, sir. Well, you know, and, you know, part of the things we talk about with a driver, you know, things that can help, uh, what can a driver do to help that? I mean, I know there's things that maybe we're not doing correctly maybe all the time. And every time we don't do something correctly, and when I say we, I'm talking about drivers, when they do, don't do something correctly, it burns time, right? It burns time. You it know, wastes time. What is, what is an example maybe that we need to get a little better at that we're not doing as well job? You know, I think one of the big things is, um, you know, windows on loads with windows. We're operating in the office with the assumption that the driver is going to try to get there as early as they can, which again allows us to plan for their next load. So, you know, we have a, a window of, of 10 to 1400, for instance, you know, mm -hmm. if we can be there at 10, we'd like for them to get there at 10. Right. Uh, because we may be able to get unloaded quickly, you know, and by, by noon or early afternoon, we're ready to go pick up our next load versus not delivering that load to 1,400, then lose our, the next load, lose yeah. the next load or, or chances decrease the later the day goes on. So, you know, that's, that's one thing, maximize, you know, go ahead and get there with the, uh, with the intention of getting unloaded as quickly as possible. That's what a, a phrase we use in the office a lot is, you know, hey, how quickly can we get, finished with this load and on to another one. And, you know, if we get our drivers thinking that same concept of, okay, I need to get there and get this one unloaded as quickly as I can, save as many hours as I can, put myself available and put it on us to find them another load. Right. And, you know, something I've heard some drivers talk about in, in recent recent past is talking about weighing loads and not, they'll you know, pick up a load, they don't have any clue what it weighs, do they need, do they need to weigh it, it's a drop load maybe, or, you know, hey, how do I get to it? But Let's talk a little bit about, hey, what, what should a driver do when he picks a load up as far as weight goes? Sure. Well, it's, um, I think it comes down to common courtesy a lot of times for the, for the next driver. You know, knowing you're going to be dropping this load, you know, there's a, a little bit of a, uh, I guess, a, a mindset that, well, it's not going to be my problem. Yeah. Well, it's, it is our, it's all our problems. And, um, you know, 36,000 pounds is the weight we've decided that uh, paperwork shows it's over 36,000. Let's weigh it. And, and again, it, it comes down to, it doesn't have to be that. If the driver has any doubt whatsoever, you know, we encourage everybody to go ahead and scale it. Right. So if it's 36,000 pounds, we want to scale it. And, uh, you know, if we're dropping loads, we want to leave that next driver with the knowledge of where he's at weight-wise. You know, fuel levels could be different. So um, that's the big thing. Of course, a lot of our drivers use the CAT scale out right. uh, when, when scaling Drivers loads. love that, the ones that talk about The ones that use that CAT scale out, it's a time saver. Makes it really easy, you know, don't have to even get out of the tractor. So, uh, you know, we throw out there, you know, as long as it's a certified scale, we're, we're fine with, with wherever they choose to scale it. But certainly the CAT scale out is, is something that most drivers prefer. Yeah. Um, you know, that even has an opportunity when you register for that to enter email addresses. And uh, certainly you want to enter your email address as the driver because you want that electronic copy of that, right. that scale ticket. But, you know, we also encourage them to put their fleet manager's email address on that because if we swap loads, that gives us an opportunity to perhaps get that load to that next driver or get that, right. that email to that next driver with that information. Worst case, you know, we're going to have to leave the paperwork with the load so we can leave a, a handwritten note as far as that goes with what, what right, your weights right. are. So just pass that information. We're not always able to see that next driver or hand it to them directly. So how do we get that paperwork to them? How do we communicate with them without seeing them? 
And those are things that seem kind of simple, but yeah. uh, it's it's huge, and it wastes time if we don't do it. Right, that's that's the biggest thing. It goes back to you know how many hours can you drive in a day? Well, if you're on duty and you're in there, and all of a sudden you got to take it take the load somewhere else to weigh it because you don't have any paperwork, no idea, or maybe you didn't have to go do that, so you might save thirty minutes or an hour of that next driver's time, and that's really what you're looking at there at that point, right? It is, and you know, how, how silly is it for one driver to weigh it and pass it to another driver and, and him or her to go weigh it as well? Uh, again, didn't have to do that, just wasting time, plus waste the cost of a scale ticket. So, um, you know, their EFS card has $30 a day. That should be about enough for two scales. Yeah. Uh, if we need more, just get with your leader. We can, we can add more to it. So certainly that's a big one. And, you know, you mentioned paperwork a minute ago about the paperwork there, but uh, another thing about paperwork brought up to my mind, you know, we need to make sure we've got the right load with the right paperwork and the right trailer and everything. I, you know, I've seen some things recently where we had drivers pull the wrong trailer three or 400 miles out of route because they didn't get the paperwork to match. That's really important too, right? It's huge. It's huge. And thank goodness that doesn't happen much, but we, we do see it happen from time to time. And, and, and certainly it's as simple as just being a little more... Uh, having a little more attention to detail and, and looking and make sure that computer matches those those bills and, and making sure those loads are going where we think we're going. Um, you know, we, we do things with, with uh, multiple um, verticals of Averitt. You know, we, we LTL may pick up there, truckload may pick up there. They see Averitt sometimes, they yeah. just start handing paperwork out. Just make sure, make sure our load matches where we say it goes and uh, certainly raise your hand right then if there's a problem. Right. That's, a, that's a big one. And, you know, pre and post trip, I, I, you know, we've, we've talked about that for ages. And, you know, the, the, if people just do pre and post trips, it saves the next driver either, you know, could save you a breakdown on the road, the driver that's doing the pre or the post trip. But it also, if you're dropping that trailer, it could save the next driver time on the next load as well if they know there's something wrong and it needs to go to the shop. It all adds uh, up. Pre and post trips, it's so, so important. It's it? critical, critical. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it allows us again to back to that maximizing our time. You know, if if there's some time built into that, that's the opportunity. That that time that's built in is the time to get that problem fixed. Right. So, uh, versus finding out later that I've got a problem and I could have already had it fixed, but now I'm now I'm getting into my time because I'm ready to drive. I'm I've got hours to drive. Load needs to be moving, and I can't move because I got to fix this problem that should already been fixed. Right. Any other things come to mind that would save time and save money and then it, it help drivers get more miles? Yeah, while we're on paperwork, I do want to touch on the, the sticker, the, the pro sticker. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a big one when, um, you know, a lot of drivers maybe don't understand just how important that is, but we want to get a pro sticker on every bill of lading and, uh, and not only get it on it, but fill it out completely. I uh, had an incident last week where I was looking at a load, there was a claim question that came up and, and we were uh, trying to determine, uh, you know, was the seal intact at delivery? Yeah. We had the sticker on the paperwork. We had it all filled out, but we didn't circle that question where it asked, was the seal intact at delivery? And, you know, it just puts us in a tough spot when it comes to, to fighting a claim or something where we're not guilty right. and, and trying to prove we're not guilty if we, go, if we don't get something filled out. So we got the, the load number, seal number, the question about intact at delivery. Of course, that's was right. the seal intact in our signature. So just very important that we, we get that on there. And I also want to touch on special instructions. Uh, and maybe explain that a little bit. Maybe we, it's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, I since think sometimes about, special instructions, especially drivers that haven't been around a long time, may not realize those. Yeah, so the way those works, we, we've got certain customers that require certain things that maybe not other customers require. And um, instead of having to when I make that assignment, remember that, oh yeah, this is a Walmart load, so the Walmart directions are, and send a message to the driver that this is what you need to do. We can attach that to the code that is assigned to that customer in the computer. So every time a load from that particular customer is assigned, the special instructions follow it. Right. And you know, that's a really a time saver. It can, it's consistent for us that the same drivers get the, or the different drivers get the same message. And, um, you know, those are very, very important, and I just can't emphasize that enough because I think those are, are often easy to scan over and maybe not take them uh, too seriously. And, and again, not, not that we do that, but every once in a while we'll see that. And I'll give you an example. Uh, right now we're doing a load for Walmart, and um, when it's a drop-in hook, the customer provides us a sticker that we want to get on that paperwork. 
and we've put some special instructions on it out there how that needs to work and and a lot of times the customer will staple the the sticker to the paperwork and the drivers are sending that paperwork in and they're thinking well the sticker's getting there because my paperwork's making it into corporate which sometimes works sometimes but what if that something happens abnormally to that right. then then all of a sudden now our, our plan has not worked so we want to take that sticker and actually peel it off stick it on the back of the bill of lading and and send it in that way and those special instructions dictate how that needs how to, to work that. so it's just a matter of read looking at all your instructions on the qualcomm when the loads come over take the time to read the, everything and see if there's any special instructions right yes sir it's it's just that important if we'll just uh, you know if you see those special instructions they're not just being sent for, for no reason. So right. make sure you read them, understand them, follow them. If you have any questions, get with your leader. And you know, I mentioned something a minute ago. I mentioned Qualcomm and it made me think, you know, I know I know we're just right now in the beginning stages of testing the tablet out. You want to kind of give an update on where we're at on that? Yeah, we've been talking about tablets for a little while now. <laughs> um, we have uh, finally reached a point where we do have some testing going on. So all good news. Now we're, we're very early in the process. I don't know that I can give a date or an update <laughs> yet on when we're going to be converting over. We have eight drivers right now testing the tablet. And, um, you know, from the driver side of things, things going pretty well. Yeah. Uh, they seem to be adapting well as far as it being very user friendly. So we're pretty, uh, pretty happy as far as uh, that side of it. So uh, a lot of, a lot of bugs to still work out and we want to get all that worked out before we to move forward, of course, for uh, convenience of everybody else. But yeah. uh, we've got eight of them testing. It's coming. I uh, just don't know how soon. Well, it's going to be a good thing, I think, when it does. It's going to provide a lot of opportunities for us. It's going to, and it's going to save drivers time, right? I don't think we even know how beneficial it's going to be to us yet right. to a certain extent. You know, you're talking about uh, capability of, of sending in your bills Paperwork. electronically. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's the first thing that comes to mind that's going to be big. And again, don't know how soon that'll be. Uh, active and ready to go, but that down the road, that's that's how that'll work. And uh, you know, communication, how we communicate, and the, the opportunities that we have to communicate, uh, you know, through video or or whatever. Yeah. You know, who, who knows what may be coming down the road? But the opportunities, I think, are endless. I think you know some of the drivers I've been talking to, they're excited about it. They're, and the ones I've, I've talked to, a couple that are testing it, and they like it. You know, so I think it's going to be a great thing. They said it's easy to use. You know, everybody I've talked to said, yeah, it's not a problem to learn. So I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be really in good shape when that moves. And hopefully it will move sooner rather than later, hope, right? Hope so. Well, I know we're doing a lot, you know, there's a lot going on, a lot of focus this year. I, you know, uh, we, you know, really focusing on driver miles and revenue per truck. And part of, the, part of the big part of that is decreasing wait time, looking at, you know, de decreasing detention as much as possible and decreasing our wait time. And all that ties up to driver miles and increased revenue per truck. So that's really the focus of everything, right? Absolutely. That's priority one. Priority one. Well, I hope that's, the, you know, it needs to be priority one for everybody. It needs to be the priority for all the drivers. And some of the things we talked about today are the things that will help us get to those points, right? Yes, sir. And then we got the priority on from the fleet manager side, the operations side. I know all those folks are on board and we're going to be working hard to make sure we move those two things. And the good news is we're starting to see some movement, right? Starting to see some movement. Winter, winter's uh, slowly but truly exiting the picture here. There's Spring's on the horizon, so we're uh, got some, some good days ahead. Hopefully no more snowstorms or anything like that. Uh -huh. we're, just re we're ready to get past all that, right? I hope we're finished with those for the year for sure. <laughs> Was well, there anything else you want to tell the drivers? Uh, just want to touch real quick while we're talking about scaling. Old bridge law comes uh -huh. into play too. You know, oh so yeah. I had a driver ask me specifically if I, you know, mentioned bridge law. So you know, let's make sure we know where that forty-one foot mark is, and right. you know, when we're dropping loads, not only do they need to be legal from a from a uh, scaling side of things, but from a from a length and uh, bridge law as well. So yeah. just uh, make sure we give that emphasis. And other than that, uh, you know, all drivers couldn't do it without them. Appreciate them. Um, Appreciate what you do for us every day. Yeah, you mentioned scaling the load and we're 41 foot mark and all that. And I just brought something to mind. I've seen some recent pictures where drivers have not have missed the landing pad on dropping it. You know, I, I, if I could ask drivers to do anything, it would be, hey, when you're dropping a trailer, try to make sure you've got those on the concrete. Right. It's a great point. It's great. Yeah, because it just costs money, costs time. It's a, it, again, it's things that like that that we can improve on and make us all better, and it'll all get to where we want to be, which is drivers are going to make more money as a result of it, right? That's right. You know, a lot of things we've talked about today are really just so <laughs> simple. You know, make yeah. sure you hit the landing pad. But if we miss it, it's just right. very costly. 
Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming in, and uh, we appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you all out on the road. Talk to you all later.